The first Android 12 developer preview is upon us, giving us a very early taste of the version that'll roll out to Pixel phones later in the year and launch on pretty much every new Android phone in 2022. So as with previous very early Android builds, a lot is going to change between now and the eventual beta and final releases of Android 12, not least to do with the way it looks, which is the very first thing we're going to dive into here. Recent leaks unearthed by XDA developers have pointed to a very different Pixel UI potentially coming to later Android 12 builds, and that's in contrast to the first preview that we have here, which after a fresh installation pretty much looks very similar to Android 11. Nevertheless, dig a little deeper and there is plenty of new stuff to be seen. The most obvious change is here in the notification area, which has been redesigned for Android 12. App icons on the left side of incoming notifications are uniformly circular now, matching the pixel aesthetic. And there's a new dedicated snooze button in the bottom right corner of notifications from apps like Gmail, which is a little bit more visible than the old method of swiping to the right. The opacity of background elements behind notifications is slightly changed as well, and there's considerably more spacing between text, making each notification bigger than before. And notification text is also indented to the right slightly, which I think looks nicer, but is actually a little bit worse in terms of information density compared to Android 11. Also in the settings app as well as the quick settings panel, you'll notice this light blue color as a sort of secondary accent color. It appears in a bunch of places, but right now it doesn't seem to change based on your choice of custom color. That'll probably be added in a future build. Meanwhile, in the settings app for top level switches like Wi-Fi here, you'll notice this new redesigned power switch. Next up, the Pixel Launcher. This hasn't changed a whole lot compared to Android 11, but there is now a 4x5 icon layout, which could be a nice alternative for smaller phones if you're feeling like the default 5x5 grid is a little bit cramped. The screenshot UI hasn't changed a whole lot in Android 12, but if you monkey with some hidden settings in the Android emulator, like XDA's Michelle Rachman here, you can play with a slightly broken version of the new scroll shot feature. This is something we've been expecting in Android 12 for quite some time, though obviously a bunch of Android OEMs already have their own version of this feature. Speaking of screenshots, the markup screenshot editor that debuted in Android 11 has grown some new features in this latest developer preview. Android 12 adds support for adding emoji and text to your screenshots. As always, you can access markup by tapping the edit button after taking a screenshot, and just with the text you can resize and reposition your emoji. The new media control panel was one of the biggest changes in Android 11, consolidating all your active media into one place, but as we've spent more time with it over the past year, it's become apparent how annoying it can be when it aggressively pops up media controls from an app that you don't want to use. With Android 12, you can selectively prevent apps from appearing in the expanded media control area. To do this, go to settings, sound and vibration, media, and then you can toggle off any unwanted apps. Okay, so let's get to the big one, the one feature in the Android 12 preview that points to significant UI changes coming down the pike. The internal name for this is Silky Home, and to enable it, you have to mess with some stuff via ADB at the command line. When enabled, it gives you a dramatically redesigned settings app that's reminiscent of Samsung's One UI or OnePlus's Oxygen OS 11. Bigger icons, a bigger text banner up at the top here, and easier one-handed use as a result. In its current state, Silky Home is kind of hilariously large, especially in the main settings screen, so this likely will be tuned up in future builds. Obviously, the internal name here, Silky Home, suggests more changes may well be coming to the home screen and other parts of the system UI in future builds, and that would seem to be backed up by recent screenshots shared privately by Google with Android manufacturers and unearthed by XDA developers recently. Still early days though, so if this stuff is coming to Android 12, I wouldn't necessarily expect to see it in a preview build until at least the first public beta in May. Anyway, back to the nitty gritty features of Android 12. There's a new top level safety and emergency area in the settings app now, bringing together emergency contacts and local emergency service details. There's also emergency SOS, which when enabled will allow users to instantly call 911 or another emergency contact by pressing the power button five times in quick succession. There's even a handy option for a countdown timer when you do this to help cut down on accidental emergency calls. Android has supported sharing your Wi-Fi info via QR code for a couple of years now, but in Android 12 you can now share connectivity details via the nearby share feature, which is basically Google's version of AirDrop. Pretty useful if you don't want to mess around with pointing a QR code scanner at a friend's phone. As with any new version of Android, there are also a bunch of under-the-hood changes for developers to get to grips with. Android 12 gets support for AVIF, a new image format that significantly improves image quality without increasing file sizes, and it can automatically transcode HEVC and HDR video files to the more widely compatible AVC format. Android 12 also gets support for up to 24 audio channels, and in a rather fun addition, can now tie your phone's haptic motor to its audio output for a more immersive gaming experience. 
Android 12 reportedly has the internal name Snowcone at Google, but don't expect to see that anywhere in the official branding since Google retired the sweet treat nicknames back with Android 10. Like I said, this is a very early look at Android 12 and we're still around 6 months away from it being anywhere near final. Stick with Android Central in the meantime though and subscribe so you don't miss our full coverage of all future versions of Android 12. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.